In this Blender video, I'll be demonstrating how to add cracks to the surface of an object. The method that I'll be showing uses a procedural texture and so we don't need an external image. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.74. I'll be starting with a simple scene. I have a sphere sitting on top of a plane that's illuminated with a spot lamp. The spot lamp has a size of 1, a strength of 5000, and a spot shape size of 35 degrees. Up here, the engine selection is set to Cycles Render. Now let's switch to the compositing screen layout. The Shader Nodes button should be selected, and there should be a check mark next to Use Nodes. Now I'll right click on the sphere to select it so that we can see its node setup. I'll also switch to Rendered View so that we can get a better look at what's happening. To give myself more room to work, I'll close the Properties panel by pressing N. Here we have a mix shader along with a diffuse and glossy shader. The facing output of the layer weight node will cause the surface areas that are angled away from the camera to use more of the glossy shader than the surface areas that are angled toward the camera. I have the blend value set to 0.1. If you press Shift A, you can find the layer weight node in the input section. To create the cracks on the surface, I'll be using a noise texture along with some math nodes. To add the noise texture, press Shift A and select Texture, then Noise Texture. After running the noise texture through some math nodes, I'll be connecting it to the displacement input. But until then, I'm going to temporarily use the surface input so that you can see how the noise texture is affected by the math nodes that we'll be adding. To use the surface input, we need to first add a shader. So press Shift A and select Shader, then Emission. Then connect the noise color output to the color input. Then connect the emission output to the surface input. Here is what the noise texture looks like on the sphere. Now let's add a math node. So press Shift A and select Converter and then Math. Drop it on the connection coming out of the color output. Then change the math type to Subtract. Now move the connection from the color output to the bottom value and verify that the top value is set to 0.5. Now the texture is black and white. This also shifts the levels of the noise texture so that it's centered around zero. Now duplicate the subtract node by pressing Shift D. Connect the color output to the top input and verify that the bottom value is set to 0.5. Now if I move the connection from the bottom math node to the top one, the black and white colors on the sphere will be reversed. I'll show you this again. Next, let's add another math node. So press Shift A and select Converter and then Math. Drop it on the connection going into the color input. Then connect the bottom subtraction node to the bottom input. Now change the math type to maximum. The output of this node will be the greater of the two inputs. Now the sphere shows some black lines that we can use for the cracks, but we only want to use the black lines and not the rest of it. So let's add another math node. So press Shift A and select Converter and then Math. Drop it on the connection going into the color input. Change the math type to minimum. Now set this value to 0 0.01. Now this sphere has black lines and the rest of it is a dark gray color. So we'll use another math node to lighten it up. So press Shift A and select Converter and then Math. Drop it on the connection going into the color input. Change the math type to Multiply. And set this value to 50. This lightened up the dark gray colors. Now we're done with the emission shader, so right click to select it and press X to delete. Then connect the mix shader to the surface input. Now connect the multiply node to the displacement input. Now we have cracks on the sphere. 
Next, let's change the scale of the noise texture. The smaller this value is, the larger the pattern will look. So I'm going to decrease it to 2. You'll notice now that the cracks seem smooth. So increase the detail value to 10. This makes the edges jagged. Now I'll reduce the scale value to 0.5. You'll notice that the cracked areas have a rough texture, but the material is glossy. So we're going to add some nodes to give the cracked areas a diffuse material. So right click on the mix shader to select it and press Shift D to duplicate it. Drop it on the connection going into the surface input. Then select the diffuse shader and press Shift D to duplicate. Connect it to the bottom shader input. Click here to change the color and make it a little darker. Now press Shift A and select Converter and then Math. Change the math type to less than. Then connect the maximum node to the top input. Then connect the output to the mix shader's factor input. We need the value of this node to always match the value of this node. We can do this with a value node. So press Shift A and select Input, and then Value. Set the value to 0 0.01. Then connect it to both of these value inputs. The Less Than node compares its two inputs. When the top input is less than the bottom input, the output will be a 1 which will select the diffuse shader. When the top input is not less than the bottom input, the output will be 0 and the other shader will be selected. Now we're finished adding nodes, so let's look at how we can use them to control the look of the cracks. The Multiply node controls the depth of the cracks. Higher values make the cracks deeper, so if I reduce the value to 25, the cracks become shallower. If I increase it to 200, they become deeper. The value node controls the width of the cracks. The larger the value, the wider they will become. So if I reduce the value to 0 0.002, they will become narrower. If you change the scale of the noise texture, then you may need to readjust the value and multiply values. Now let's look at how we can change the position of the cracks. So click on the Texture button. You may need to expand this panel to bring the Texture button into view. In the Mapping section, you can change the location, rotation, and scale values. I'll change the Z rotation value. Now when I render the image, it looks like this. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.